our stink bug problem is completely out of control. They have been growing exponentially over the years. And I will show you in this video where we went terribly wrong and what we're doing about it now. These are my beautiful dragon tongue beans in the early morning sun. And of course, I always check and sure enough, you see it? Stink bug right there. And then I hand pick and hand pick and hand pick. Those are the cucumbers. Here's another one. Here's one. On the cucumbers. Tomatoes. On the fennel. The mulberries. On the corn. Hand picking helps. I just lost him. Hand picking helps, but who has time to walk all across the gardens all day long to pick stink bugs? So here we go. This is the harvest of three days. I can assure you that this strainer is not used in the kitchen. This is insanity. Picking it every single day. These are nicely fermented by now. Let's see how much we get. Empty. And the big one. Empty. Look. All these are stink bugs. Three days. From just the beans and the cucumbers and a couple other things. This one's still a lot crawling? No. The tomatoes aren't turning yet, so they will not descend on them until a little bit later. But no wonder we had such a hard time growing anything. I will put a stop to this because I need to eat my food too. I tried the barium method with the little organza baggies over the single fruits, like the peppers, the tomatoes, and that actually works really good, except you go insane buying these bags and putting them on, especially if you have a bigger garden. So this year with the row garden, we purchased some row covers and they're wonderful and nice, but would you believe it? Stink bug. He got under the thing. I got to squish him real quick. Give me a second. Predators help, but there are only very few. The wheel bug is one of them and they are non-discriminatory. So they eat whatever comes before them. And a lot of times it's not a stink bug something more serious would have to show up to eat them up. So where did we go wrong? When we bought this place 15 years ago, it was nothing but pasture, grass, and pecan trees. We grew the most beautiful veggies without any stink bugs. What happened? Well, for the last decade, we were head over heels into permaculture. We sheet mulch, pulled in loads of hay to mulch, we spend a fortune in time and money on wood chip mulch. We chopped and dropped, but especially this. So this is where we had two rows of potatoes. And of course, nice as we are in all permaculture style, we have weeds and flowers growing next to it because the bees, the pollinators. This is wild radish. We had this on the property forever. It used to be a red tail radish and we let it self seed. It is beautiful. It's the only thing that blooms in winter. But now let me show you something. So what we did all these years was raise stink bugs. Not sure this is visible, but they are creeping and crawling everywhere. Hundreds of them, thousands of them. We have effectively managed to have a stink bug farm. No matter where you go on this mode plot, they're there. This is so, so disheartening. But here comes the super weapon. And here's the solution. Terminate the infested areas, the infested plants, and then kill them with fire. 
it'll kill the babies and all the other stuff. I do pick out spiders and ladybugs and other good things before we do that. This is the grapevine setup and every winter we have mustard greens there. They are now seeding out and every year we let them seed out and that's where we went terribly wrong. Mustards and the radishes, all these things. There he is. See him? Doesn't focus. Well, they're trap crops for the stink bugs. I didn't know that. I thought it was sunflower and other things. Um, now that we know better, hopefully we'll do better. It's just so sad that I cannot grow these things anymore and let them seed out and just have a good time for the bees and everything else. It also looked so pretty. It was the one thing that was blooming every spring through the winter. There he goes. I'm going to drown him now. There are so many. It'll probably take us a couple years to stabilize this population. But then my tomatoes have a chance again. Make sure you check your cranium lilies too. Because look at them hiding in there. Let's see if I can zoom in. They are running them over too right now. So weird. I'm not going to mow these. I'll just hand pick those. So trap crops are good, whether you knew it was a trap crop or not. But you have to make sure you terminate them. There's just no other way around. Otherwise, it turns into a stink bug factory. They do so much damage. Get in there. Join your friends. This one won't let go. <laughs> ah. 